Historically, the settlement for really liquid, easy to source, minimally complex securities like U.S. Treasuries, that's been T plus one. And T effectively means trade date, right? Today. So Kristen, mm -hmm. if I ask for your offer on 100 million tens right now and you say done today, I'm expecting those bonds to show up in my account tomorrow. T More plus complex one. structures like mm -hmm. those derivatives have historically been T plus two. And corporate bonds used to be T plus three. But as the world has become increasingly electronic, settlement times have naturally shortened. So now mm -hmm. everything that was previously T plus two, that includes equities, corporate bonds, ETFs, credit default swaps, they now have to be settled T plus one. For most transactions that happen in the global securities market, when you do a trade, you either verbally say done or you click a button on an electronic interface. Okay. But think about it this way. When you buy a dress on Revolve, you click confirm my purchase the dress or the shoes. They don't just magically operate in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. The order has to be processed. It has to go down to a warehouse. They have to start the shipping and logistics process. And then somehow it gets to your door two to three days later. We also take for granted when we say done on a trade, we instantaneously have that risk. And guess what? That's how we'll put it into our ledger. If wow. I buy $100 million worth of bonds or $10,000 worth of NVIDIA stock, I put it in my book and I'm going to start hedging and monitoring that risk immediately. That trade has to go through an entire processing system. So if the trade is done via voice or over like a Bloomberg chat, it's then inputted manually into an internal booking system, typically by the most junior person on the desk. This is literally what every single analyst and associate does in sales and trading. It's a huge part of their responsibility. It then flows downstream to middle and back office support roles. And then they're charged with the actual mechanics of coordinating wire transfers and reconciling what each counterparty quote unquote knows or doesn't know on the trade. So they're checking things like collateral service agreements, by the way, CSAs, they dictate the margin requirements associated with derivatives trades, like and on and on and on. There's also legions of technology guys constantly updating and servicing the systems that are different, by the way, from bank to bank for all those internal booking and reconciliation activities. They have to be updated constantly because every time there's a new compliance rollout, those systems need to then be overhauled and reworked and then activated across thousands of computers all across the world. And sometimes the trades that you're booking are super vanilla and they're easy to input. Some mm -hmm. trades are totally bespoke. It would be like, hey, you're going to get paid 50 basis points every time the price of cat food rises above $10 a can during the month of January in 2035, okay? The more complex the trade, derivatives, interest rate swaps, credit derivatives, or the less liquid the product, like corporate bonds, the more opportunities there are for something to go wrong because there's right. more moving pieces, right? There's more parts involved with processing and settling the trades. So now yeah. scale that up to the hundreds mm -hmm. of millions and billions of dollars in face value and derivative and notional that are trading constantly, literally every second among tens of thousands of market participants all over the world. There's a lot of room for things to go wrong. So these mm -hmm. grace periods were put in place.